Yellow cedar is the first class wood. It carves the easiest and it um, sands beautiful. Well, cottonwood sands beautiful too. We were fortunate enough to have the lumber mill cut us a piece of cottonwood. So I have a piece of cottonwood in front of me and they, it started with three eighths of an inch thick and it is also um, about 24 inches long and 22 inches at the width. We'll look it over for uh, knots. We'll also look it over for splittage and then we'll try to line the template up someplace to where the knots won't interfere with it. We will be using a pattern made by the late Andrew Grunholt. So uh, one Which way is, might be to uh, um, measure around where the hat would fit. And then once you have that length there, uh, to use that to measure this distance on the inside of the hat, That's representing nice. it in paper, this yeah. fit right here. Of course they had contacts because they had you know, fresh contacts there. But you know, they might have still been making over there, but I don't know. Yeah. And so you get your pattern, you place it on the wood, you'll notice that the grain is going sideways, follow along on the wood to trace that. And then it, you'll cut this out with a uh, bandsaw. So you'll have the two side lines and the center line that'll be the actual three-eighths of an inch thick. He would start, of course, with a little hat like this, a young boy. And there's actually one more of this size. This one has a um, has a more abrupt bill, mm -hmm. and then this one here is not as abrupt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's more of a visor than this one. We call a medium, and then a long. What we do here is on the um, chief's hat or the full crown. We um, make sure we're going with the opposite on the grain of wood, and then what you're looking for on your wood is um, if there's knots and stuff. You want to um, make sure these uh, the side pieces or the center piece will be on there because those parts won't be carved away. All this other stuff will be carved away. So what I do is I get the pattern and then like I said I line it up, make sure I'm with the, um, the knots. And then the important part is to get your center line. So you can see I went off the wood there and then the center line down here. Then you trace exactly how it is there on all the, the visors except for this um, short visor you'll have a hole there so you want to be pretty much exactly on there and then you're going to keep these parts on there as your high parts those you won't chisel away and then after that's marked on there we'll take it down on the bandsaw and cut out exactly like this and then we'll bring it back up and clamp it to the table and start chiseling they're going to carve this all out and they're going to keep the high parts, the side, and then the center line they're going to keep. So basically that is the inside of there. And so that's where it's going to bend. You would find the best side. The side is the worst side of material. So you would want to chisel this away. The other side, it'd be smoother because you're going to sand that and this eventually will be the outside of your hat and this would be the inside of your hat. We go along, the depth we go, that's how much wood you're gonna cut away. We have a spring clamp that we clamp to the table, your hat to the table, and we also have a seat clamp, and then we clamp that to the table as well. We'll be using a scoop chisel. You, you chisel away from you and taking just little bites. You don't wanna take very big bites. So you're taking little bites at a time and you want to make sure that you don't go too thin on your hat. And it's hard to know sometimes, but you remember you have your three-eighths of an inch thick on each side and then your center line, and then you have your line drawn in the, um, on the sides. So you're gonna go through and just eventually, you know, work and work and work, and then eventually you'll be able to just bend it a little bit and you'll know when it's thin enough. You wanna make sure that you don't chisel straight down. You do not want it straight. You just want to take the shape of the chisel. The same thing on the center line. You're going to chisel away and following that line. And so you'll have a rounded side from the center line and a rounded side from this side. So it'll be like a, a U, a, a large U. The center line is very important because it's going to make your hat bend perfectly. 
and the two side supports are very important because they are the strength of your hat once it becomes bent. A, a, lot, of, a lot of hat carvers like chisels, like this one. I personally prefer planes. They give me a lot more control in terms of the depth of how much I carve. If I'm carving with, with a chisel and I slip, I can drive right through the wood. Uh, whereas when I'm working with a plane, it only takes off a small amount. So uh, quite often I prefer to work with planes. I'm basically thinning down the, the wood in the proper uh, areas. Where you want the wood to bend, you want it to be thinner. So I want it to bend right along this line and along this line to where it'll, it'll bend down here. So I'm hollowing it out, making it thinner in these areas. And then to the back of the hat, the part that wraps around behind your head, you want um, these parts to be thinner also. So, so that after you steam them, uh, they will bend. You can tell it's thin enough by starting to flex it, and if it'll bend on its own, then you're getting close to it being thin enough. So I've still got a ways to go to thin these down, and then looking at this area here, I've got a ways to thin it down here. So this we're going to go this thin, so just right about halfway, or so a little more than halfway. So you see this line all the way through. It's a full crown hat. What we do is we clamp it down to on a flat surface. We clamp down on the side supports here. So I'm going to chisel this all the way. Then I'm going to reclamp, unclamp it, reclamp it the other way, and then chisel the rest of this away. And then we will um, sand it. Or like when I chisel, you can see I'm chiseling against the grain, but I'll come over here after and knock out all these high spots so it'll be less sanding. We want it um, pretty thin on the, on the very back. And this is um, just one process after I have it thin enough on both sides. I'll take my centerpiece and this is called um, for grooving. Then I line up with a center line on the front. Then I have a center line on the back here. And then I, I trace that. Of course I smooth this all out. And then we have another tool, a special grooving tool. And then I will groove that out and that'll make the bend. We're getting it ready for the steaming and it only takes about 30 minutes. So the next stage is to soak them in water and basically boil them. We put the hats in the water and they will boil for 30 minutes and they are held down with rocks that will keep the, the wood submerged. The jig is built by Andrew Grunholt and uh, it was basically also designed by Andrew Grunholt. It's plywood, most parts of it are, are plywood, and it was basically designed to hold the hat into the particular shape that it needs to be in uh, while it's being formed and then while it's being dried. We bend and mold the hats and we use these forms, our jigs. The hat that we'll be bending first will be called a short visor and we have the form or the jig on the table and when we bring it in from the hot water, the wood is put on the form. We'll use spring clamps and then we will clamp them to the hat. And we will do that all the way around the hat. Yeah, Dolores will be holding it to, so we um, continue to clamp. We'll use pieces of wood. They will be put on top of the wood and spring clamps. Okay. 
Okay, we have a couple of cracks, but it won't hurt it, so we need to take these off and put the clothespins on. We'll take the clamps off, and then we put what we call the clothespins on. And the clothespins take place of the big clamp. That way the hat could shrink up on the mold and it will not separate or split. And the clothespins hold it so the, um, the hat will shrink up on the jig. Okay, we could take this one, didn't have all, and then this one. Nope, keep that one on. Okay, I'm going to put this one back up. There we go. I got it. Okay. Okay. That is the short visor bent and on the jig. And you can see we took off all, all the main clamps, so now it'll shrink up on the form and it'll take the shape of the uh, jig. I'm gonna put one on the crack. Yeah. This is a jig for the long visor. It's all one contained unit. And we clamp the jig to the table. We'll bring the hat in wearing our gloves. The water, of course, is very hot. This jig, again, is clamped to the table. The hat will go in to the jig, being careful not to clamp the person's hand. And again, we use the spring clamps. We are clamping down the um, backs, or we call them the wings now, of the uh, visor. And they, they will uh, hold the hat to the jig. And you'll see it does take a little bit of muscle power. And this is a fast process. And then I move the clamps and um, so Tim could uh, work his way around. And then the hat will stay in this mold for 24 hours. And then um, he needs to check inside to make sure it has a good shape. And we're putting in the wedge inserts to keep the shape. He checked on the inside of the hat to make sure it lined up the center line. And, and um, also, we um, put the wedge in there because it was starting a crack. And the, um, where the cracks are is actually a sap line. And that's typical of the wood. And we could move these two side ones and that one, just the middle one. OK, and it's going to have a nice shape. Good job. For the full crown, the chief's hat, we clamp this to the table. We're getting it ready for the steaming, and it only takes about 30 minutes in the, in the water to steam. When the hat is brought in, the person bending the hat will hold the hat. They will, should be wearing an apron because it, it'll be hot. And then they will take the hat, bend it on the corner of the table that you'll see the bends are. And then they'll come and insert it in here, and they will hold it. until the, the helper comes. Tim, yeah. Does it look symmetrical? So do, do two? I did. No, two double. Yeah. yeah. Just the front needs to be flipped. Okay. Okay, and the last one, the last string she'll tie will, is to hold it together, to hold the shape. The hat is unclamped from the table. Okay, then the back brace here, Tim. And this is shoved up in there. and puts the final process of it, and then reclamped to hold the uh, top of the uh, holder on.
and this back brace holds it in to keep the uh, back of the hat the round shape. Yeah, let's see. Okay. All right, can you pull this out just for a sec? And then I'll push it. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Now push it back in. There you go. Is it all the way in? Yep. So that will hold your hat in place. They will click, click it in there and tighten it down so it won't fall out of the, and it'll snug it in, and this hat will shrink by itself. Okay. And these wedges hold, helps hold it for the shape. And you did a good job on the shape of the front. You could go ahead and show them the front there, Tim. And then the hat will stay in this mold for 24 hours.